Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. This is a podcast style show where we take a big topic, we break it down over a whole week. This week we're talking about gender identity. You'd probably agree, a pretty important topic and kind of a controversial one. So far we've explained what gender is, we've explained how to talk about it, but is gender just something that humans have? Are there ways to escape this kind of gender merry-go-round that we've created for ourselves? What about animals? So for non-human animals, sex or the sex of an animal is more important than its gender. There's actually not a lot of proof that animals have gender. However, animals do have sexes and have variations in their sexual orientation. Animals are homosexual, they're asexual, they're bisexual, they're heterosexual, they run the gamut. Some dolphins will live their entire lives primarily sexually oriented as homosexual. But if you're somehow on the, you know, sex is inborn, binary, and permanent train, invertebrates change sex all the time. Sex is not a permanent thing for your whole life. Cuttlefish can change their shape and their color. It's an important part of being a cuttlefish. And in mixed company, so say to my left, I've got a hot female cuttlefish, and I am a male cuttlefish that thinks that female cuttlefish looks good. Then there, to my right, there's a male cuttlefish. I can actually change my shape and color and bilaterally do that, do that to show the female that I'm a male and show the male that I'm another female. Because cuttlefish understand the difference between their sex. And they can portray whichever sex they want to considering what is around them and what advantages they have for it. Parrotfish are born intersex. They actually have both parts at birth, but they behave as a male or a female in terms of their sexual functions, and sometimes they'll change in part of their life. Sometimes they'll live their whole life as a male, switch to a female for a while, maybe switch back again. Some vertebrates do this as well. Garter snakes, after their post-winter hibernation, get into what's called a snake ball, and they all roll up together, and it's kind of like this big garter orgy. It's crazy. <laughs> and some males will mimic female mating behavior, because then they'll be surrounded by other snakes, and they will gain access to body warmth from those other snakes. But they also can escape predators more quickly, and they're not on the outside, which is more dangerous than being in the middle. Northern cricket frogs change sex when the temperature spikes. This has been studied pretty heavily. You can think about it like Jurassic Park, I guess, but that's not really what it's about. That's more the African reed frog, which will switch from female to male when surrounded by other females. Again, Jurassic Park. But these are real things. These are animals that have been observed changing their sex in the wild after they have been born. So they were born one way and they swapped at some point for some reason. But it's not really the same as when humans choose to show one gender because it fits what's going on in our brains. We have a little more higher social functioning than, say, an African reed frog or a parrotfish. So when animals change sex, they're doing it for mating purposes. So one could easily argue that humans have moved beyond needing to just mate to keep the species going. We understand that it's a little more complicated than just, we're not just out there to pass on our genes and that's it. We're not living entirely extinctually like some of these other animals. So technically, gender is specifically a human thing. Born into it, it's culturally conditioned, and while animals may not have a personal gender identity, animals do have gender expression, like the cuttlefish. It understands what gender it is, and it understands what gender other things are, or sex other things are, really, and it chooses to express itself based on what it needs to do around it, or what it sees around it. Uh, I talked to my friend, Dr. Karen Bondar. She's a biologist. She specializes in animal sexuality. And she said, quote, gender identity could exist in some animals, and it probably does in some primates like chimps. Our brains, our thought patterns, our chemistry is way too similar to rule that stuff out. And that's kind of interesting. We don't have any data to support this, of course, because we'd have to admit that animals have their own internal thoughts as to their own existence. It's very difficult for science to admit, and it's problematic at best. Also, if you want to know more, you can ask her, she said, to go follow her on Twitter. She's the best. She's awesome. There are also animals outside of this binary system. Even though they don't necessarily have gender, 95% of all Drosophila flies, for example, heavily studied in science, are male or female. 
They're determined by a researcher. When they're born, someone says, this is a female Drosophila fly, this is a male Drosophila fly, not unlike humans. But what about that other 5%? There's something else. Science doesn't really have a plan for that. A study from Yale found that it's actually really easy for most animals to change sex. And some, like the parrotfish, will change and then change back. It's actually an evolutionary prerogative. Sometimes it's important for them to do that. Again, mainly because of mating, unlike humans, where it's more to match how they feel, their social beliefs, as well as their internally held identities. So why is it so hard for humans? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. It probably has to do with our social behaviors. The fact that those social behaviors put pressure on us to do something the way that the society wants us to do. And it's hard to get out of that. It's hard for society to change. It's glacial movement in terms of how quickly things do change, but it doesn't have to be this hard. So why is gender even a thing? Did you ever think about that? Why does it all matter? You can find out more about that tomorrow on Test 2 Plus. Make sure you subscribe so that you can come back and see that. Also, click here to watch one of our videos about gender identity from earlier this week. It's been a big week. It's important stuff. Also, if you'd like to talk to us a little bit about gender identity, if you have questions and comments, make sure you leave those down below the video. You can also send me a tweet over on Twitter. I am at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. We'll see you tomorrow.